Hey guys, my name is Em and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video it is going to be a reading vlog but it is going to be a different sort of reading vlog. So this is more on the lines of a 24 hour readathon however it is going to have one specific task and one specific theme. So if you can see from the title in today's video I am going to be attempting to read November 9 by Colleen Hoover on the 9th of November which is really really exciting. Today is Monday the 8th of November. I thought I would do my intro right now because I want to start reading as soon as I can in the morning to give myself more time but I'm going to be reading the entirety of this well hopefully anyways tomorrow so I decided on this a couple months ago because I was really getting into Colleen Hoover books and I read a couple of her romances in the summer and I never got around to this one and then I thought to myself why not wait to read this book until November 9 and I decided to post about it and see if anybody wanted to join this little readathon as well and I'm happy to say that so many people are I am just so excited to read this book I have read three of Colleen Hoover's books to date I have read It Ends With Us, Heart Bones and Ugly Love and I loved them all. Like she just has some special writing power that just makes you fall in love with the books and the characters and the settings and even at the happy parts you know that there's going to be something sad and I know that this book is probably going to destroy my emotions. To explain what this book is about if you do not know this follows our main characters Ben and Fallon I believe and they both have like different things going on. They meet each other and they decide that it would be a good idea to like have a romance and everything to do with a romance but only one day a year on November 9th. So this book basically follows them on multiple November 9ths as they meet each other, as they grow to love each other and I'm certain that something else happens, something goes wrong, that they no longer want to be a part of each other's lives and I can only assume that it ends heartbreakingly or maybe happy. I don't know what to expect out of the ending of this book but I'm really excited. I have heard many people say it's their favourite Colleen Hoover, I have heard many people say that it's their least favourite Colleen Hoover but I'm very excited to to read it and give my own opinion. I couldn't be more excited to start this. It is just 300 pages which I feel like should be doable in 24 hours. I have to say Colleen Hoover's covers aren't the best but it's what's inside that counts. I'm very excited to start this. I'm gonna stop talking right now, go get cozy for the evening, maybe read another book and then I will come back to you once I start reading this book at midnight. I am very excited for this journey, for this vlog. Comment down below if you have read this book, if you took part in this readathon. If you have read this book, let me know what you thought about it, if you've read any other of Colleen Hoover's books, or if you have any recommendations for books like this one or romance books in general, because I'm definitely in my romance era, but I kind of want more like wintry themed romances because like it is Christmas Eve season. <laughs> Good morning. So I look a bit of a mess because it is 9am and I am still in bed but I'm reading November 9. I'm loving this book already. I love Ben and Fallon so much. I have to say that Ben is just like the perfect boyfriend and he is just so sweet and there's one scene that's currently happening right now and this vlog will be spoiler free by the way so you're okay but like with the dress when he's like it's so cute. I just, I'm in love with this book already and I'm 46 pages in. My mom brought me in a coffee this morning because she's like, you have to get your energy up so that you can read the whole book. She's in on this. She is so here for this reading experiment. It is currently, as I said, like 9.30 in the morning maybe um, and I've read 50 pages. So I'm going to read for another little while and then I'm going to get up, shower, dressed, everything like that and then I'm going to continue reading. I do have an appointment at half two so that will take a little bit of my day and also I have a group chat going and everyone else is reading it too. I just love that like it's November 9th and I'm reading November 9th, page 57. Ben Kessler, exactly. I need this man in my life. Like, I don't know where Fallon found him. I don't know what I have to do to find my own Ben, but oh my God, <laughs> he is so perfect. The only thing I will say is these characters are supposedly 18 in the book. I think it may be slightly unrealistic that they're 18. They read a lot older than that. I don't know why that's the thing that's kind of like stopping me in my tracks, but it just seems like they're a lot older than that and they're talking about like things that have happened in the past and all of these experiences that they've had but like it's all but in like at most two years so I just feel like 
it's slightly unrealistic that they're 18 but also I suppose this book is going to go through multiple years so they will be older by the end of it but I have to say this is the cutest meeting in a book. I love these characters so much the way he makes her feel so much more confident. I'm gathering that Ben has a secret because his roommate is like you said you'd get help and he's like I'm fine you know I'm fine so gathering Ben has a secret. Gathering Fallon has a secret too I'm sure but I'm so excited to keep reading. I just love this book so much and Colleen Hoover she's done it again. Okay besties, page 72 and I'm stressed because they're saying their goodbyes right now. Fallon is moving to New York, he is staying in LA and he just says, if you audition for Broadway, I will write a book about our relationship. Now I'm stressed because this is a book. Is this the book that Ben wrote? In which case, is this book going to have a sad ending and going to make me absolutely bawl my eyes out? Because if you know me, I don't usually cry at books. I feel very sad, I tear up, I feel emotional, but I never cry at books. Except at It Ends With Us and Heartbones and The Nightingale. But those two books are the two books that I have cried at. And they've both been Colleen Hoover books. So if you've read this, which I probably will have by the time this vlog is up, but on a scale of one to 10, how much is this book gonna hurt me? I'm feeling like it's gonna hurt me, but yeah, I'm willing to let that happen. Okay, this book is absolutely going to kill me. So they've just made the arrangement that they're going to meet each other every November 9th for the next five years. So until they're 23, because Fallon has this rule that she doesn't want to fall in love until she's 23 because she wants to like find out who she is and discover what she wants with her life before finding somebody else to share it with, which honestly totally respect that. And they're just making the arrangement, but they're discussing the possibility of them falling in love with somebody else and it being really sad. And this quote literally, broke my heart. So let me read it to you. Also look at the annotations that I have from one page. So this is the quote. It says, whether or not the couple ends up together at the end of a book doesn't determine whether the book has a happy ending or not. As long as the two people end up happy, it really doesn't matter if they end up happy together. Miss Colleen Hoover, if that is foreshadowing, I am gonna come to your house and smash something because what the fuck? They have to end up together. I am not here for that. I mean, if it's done in the right way, maybe it's a good idea but not really. I just, I'm a sucker for a happy ending. Like I can deal with sad things in books and sad books in general but they need to have a happy ending and I disagree with that quote. Anyways, why does Miss Colleen Hoover literally have me in a chokehold? Like she has me in a chokehold. That's all I can say. Why am I tearing up already and literally nothing sad has happened? <sighs> this is my own foreshadowing for the ending. I've made it to the 2nd November I may cry in this part. They're a year older. A year of things have happened. Look at all those annotations that I already have. Dare I say I love this book. Okay, so I'm on page 112, still loving this, but something just happened between Ben and his brother and I was kind of really confused over what was happening and it still hasn't been revealed what has happened, but I remember watching a reading vlog where someone read this book and I got a spoiler for the book so now I kind of know in a sense what is happening but also like I don't know the full details I just remember one thing but I don't know how that thing comes to play if that makes sense and I'm not going to say anything obviously because I'm not going to spoil it on you but there was a crossover between this book and Ugly Love. One of Ben's brothers is a pilot Ian and Ian is in Ugly Love but also Ian mentioned Miles who is the love interest in Ugly Love. I love that Colleen Hoover did that and like put in the crossovers in here it's just so fun but yeah so I'm still reading I'm still loving it it is now like 11 40 and I haven't gotten up yet but I'm just so head over heels in love with this book. I think I'm gonna read for another 20 minutes until midday and then I really have to get up and get going because I have so much to do. I'm scared for what's gonna happen over the next few Novembers but the second one is so cute and I am rooting for these characters so much. Another quote that I'm absolutely obsessed with. I thought I was tougher than a word, he says, but I just discovered that having to say goodbye to you is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Ben Kessler, everybody. Benton James fucking Kessler. Okay, so it is five minutes past 12 in the afternoon and I have just reached the 3rd November. I am so obsessed with this book, like it's not even funny. I could literally sit here and do nothing all day but read this book. I have to go in like two hours so I'm going to take a little break but I will be back to this book. I made it to page 131. I am so proud of my progress so far because I kind of only started reading at half nine. Colleen Hoover does something special and she just has a way to write the most beautiful love stories while also having the perfect mix of like trauma and pain 
but also like sweet moments and it's just so sweet and I love Ben and Fallon with my whole heart. I was asking the people in the group chat how much this book is going to hurt me because a few of them have already read it and they all said 11 out of 10. So I am prepared for the heartbreak, prepared for the tears. Definitely go read it if you haven't. I have yet to like see if it's like my favourite Colleen Hoover. I haven't finished it yet so I don't know but it is on the way to being my favourite Colleen Hoover. Okay guys so it is now almost two o'clock. I have to leave right now but I will be back in a little while and I will continue reading November 9. I'm loving this book. I'm loving this readathon. Have an amazing day. Okay besties, it is almost 5 p.m. and I just got home and I'm so tired because honestly the appointments just always exhaust me and my eyes are like swollen from crying so we're just gonna move past it but it's fine. November 9, let's talk about this. Before I left I made it to the 3rd November which is great progress because there's only like two left I think, three left. Um, So I'm gonna read hopefully to the end of the Novembers now because I know after the five Novembers one of them is the book that Ben is writing so that's gonna break my heart a little bit. I know but I'm really excited to get to that part. So right now I'm going to make myself some dinner. I'm going to make some barbecue chicken, avocado salad and rice. In case you're wondering, it is the nicest thing. So I'm going to make that and eat it and probably watch some booktube as I cook and then pick this up again for the evening. I am so, so excited and I do think I'll be able to finish it. I love Ben and Fallon. At the minute, I think I'm more connected to Ben, but I do like both of them. I'm really intrigued to see how it goes and I know that like this part of the book is going to be the pain part because we've had 130 pages of happiness something bad has to happen something sad has to happen because there's 200 pages left and I refuse to believe that Colleen is going to go easy on us it's not gonna happen Miss Colleen Hoover what the fuck I have read two more pages and I'm already tearing up I can't I'm so sad okay so I'm on page 161 this book is going to be the death of me because Colleen Hoover just has a way to make even the happy scenes emotional. Like, I just feel like crying. I haven't cried cried yet, but I have teared up. I am loving it. I'm gonna get up to page 200 right now and then I'm going to be within the last 100 pages. Okay, I've only read like five more pages since I talked to you last, but my thoughts have somewhat changed. Not on the whole book, just on what's currently happening. Also ignore if you can hear that ringing in the background. It's Misty playing with wind chimes. That's how she tells us she wants to go outside. She's smart like that. My God, it is so clear that these two people love each other. Like I have never seen two characters love each other as much as they do in this book. However, the trope that is currently being used I don't know if this is a spoiler, I don't think it is, is that they keep doing things that they think is better for the other person. It's not my favourite trope because it is very similar to miscommunication in the fact that Fallon is like telling herself, I can't let him be with me because this isn't what's best for him. But Ben is saying it is what's best for me. I don't love that trope. It's going to cause so much pain. I'm like over halfway through. I don't know what to expect and I'm so scared because like I just can't imagine what is going to be so bad that it's going to cause me this much upset and emotion and sadness. I don't know what could be that bad. Okay, Ben gets it. Just after the whole thing that I said, Ben says to Fallon, because Fallon's being a little bitch right now, she has good intentions but it's just not working out for her and Ben says, no Fallon, you can't just agree to love me and then take it back because you think it's not what's best for me. That's not how this works. And I agree. Like, who the fuck does she think she is that she knows what's best for my Ben? My Ben. At Ben Kessler, if you're watching this video, you may be fictional. But if you're somehow watching this video, leave her. Come find me. Just gonna put that out in the universe. Seriously, I love these two together, but I just need the three years to be over. But I'm almost on the fourth fucking November and there's five Novembers. And then I know that something sad has to happen because there's like a whole section after the last November. If this doesn't have a happy ending, I am going to throw this book out the window. I need a happy ending. Please tell me this has a happy ending. If you're watching this and you've already read this and you know it doesn't have a happy ending, you're watching this probably manically laughing at me because you're like oh you have no idea i'm gonna cry <laughs> i'm back again so let's just say mr ben needs some sort of literary prize i know he hasn't written this so really colleen hoover needs the prize but in my head it's ben so he says when you find love you take it you grab it with both hands and you do everything in your power not to let it go you can't just walk away from it and expect it to linger until you're ready for it my fucking heart i bought new tabs the other day and i'm so glad i did fuck <laughs> Miss Colleen, 
You bitch. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> There's no need. There is no need. I'm on the 4th November, by the way. And I'm literally almost on the 5th November. This has been such a short one because I can't say why. Feeling all the emotions. I want to scream. I want to cry. I want to punch someone. I don't know which of them I want to punch. Because right now I'm mad at Ben. If you've read this book, I'm on page 184. You know why I'm mad at Ben. However, from the last November... I was mad at Fallon. So what Fallon did led to what Ben did, but they're both in the wrong. I'm a ball of emotion and... The silence is deafening. Okay. Let's talk. So I just finished the 5th of November and I'm now on to the last ever part of this book which is called November 9 by Benton James Kessler and this is the manuscript that he was working on through this whole like book. Piecing together what I just read and the spoiler that I already know. My heart knows what's coming. Should I just stop reading now? I think I should just stop reading now. If I valued my happiness I would stop reading now. Okay, besties. We're going in. Okay, besties. It is 10.35 in the night. I have got one section left of this book. I have made myself a coffee in my baby Ursula mug because I need it. Because this book is going to kill me and I have a feeling that it's going to have a sad ending. I really hope to God it doesn't have a sad ending. From what I know of Colleen Hoover, though she never ceases to surprise me, she has a lot of pain in her books, but they tend to end happy. So I'm hoping, praying, channeling that energy that she doesn't let me down right now. Okay, so remember when I said I was really scared because there was no more Novembers, but this was just the book. So I thought it was going to have a sad ending, but there's actually a 6th of November. So I'm still scared for what I'm going to read, but I'm not scared for the ending because even if it's a sad ending, it will be explained. I thought it was going to be like an open ending. So relieved. Let's get back to reading. <laughs> Well, heart equals broken. Hi guys, I don't know if you can see this, but there are nine minutes left to November 9. And I have just finished November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I truly don't know what I can say about this book that will do justice to the literary masterpiece that it is. I can't get over how Colleen Hoover can just write a beautiful, beautiful book. I was genuinely shocked when I turned the last page and I realised these are not real people. She just writes them so well that they feel like they're real characters and I feel like I know these people. I just lived six years of their life with them. I don't know what to say. First of all, five out of five stars need i say more look at all those annotations and i wrote so much in this book i do think that this is going to be my favorite colleen hoover book it immediately overtakes ugly love and it ends with us heartbones i did love a lot but more so as like a summer romance it didn't hit as hard as this book hit i didn't expect this book to hit as hard as this book hit i felt every single emotion while reading this book and some parts that were just so sad that I couldn't even cry because I felt like I was reading somebody's life story like I was reading somebody's life story but it felt like this person was real and was just bearing their whole life and soul into this book. I truly think that Fallon and Ben are soulmates. The plot twist added conflict, yes it was heartbreaking conflict 
but I feel like the ending was perfect. I know that when I'm going to be editing this, I'm going to think of a million and one things that I could have said because my thoughts will have settled by then. This was probably one of the most heartbreaking books I've read, but also not even devastatingly heartbreaking, just kind of like beautifully heartbreaking. But I can hand on heart say that this book will stick with me forever. Ben and Fallon will stick with me forever. The fact that I read this book on November 9th in 24 hours just means so much as well considering that I love the book with my whole heart. The letters in this book absolutely killed me. I think my heart shattered into a million tiny pieces. It was pieced back together. It shattered again. I loved the ending. I thought it was beautiful. One request, Colleen Hoover, if you're watching this, doubt you are. Can you please, Miss Colleen Hoover, just release like a big jumbo book of like everything that happens afterwards in all of your books. But I think everything that happened in this was perfect. Even if it wasn't a good thing, like it was perfect and there was so much sadness and so much grief, but so much hope and so much forgiveness. And honestly, I can see why this is so many people's favorite books. I do genuinely think that I will be recommending this book forever. It is definitely like in my top reads of this year. I just think it was perfect and I love a romance that is like sad and traumatic. Like I don't know why I like that, but I do. I know for a fact that I'm gonna reread this every year. I know that I'm gonna treasure this book so much because I have so many notes in it and different things that are so valuable to me now, sentimentally. And I know that I will remember this experience of reading it forever too. There's two minutes left to this day. Five out of five stars go read this book. I really hope that you liked this video. Let me know if you liked this style of video, like just reading one specific book and talking about that book. If you do like that style of video, let me know what book you would like to see me read next. Honestly, comment your favourite colour heart emoji in the comments. This book has our hearts. Literally everything she writes is like gold dust. Thank you for sticking with me during this chaotic readathon that ended up being my favourite reading experience since The Atlas Six. That is it for this video. Stay amazing, stay kind, stay making yourself cry by reading sad romances, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. How perfect that I ended this vlog at exactly midnight. It's fate. This whole day was perfect.